Okay, so one of the tricky things that we see in 3D Studio Max on a regular basis with student projects and with professional projects is the idea of trying to get volumetric lighting. Now, volumetric lighting is the idea that we can actually see particle reflections in space that are impacted by the lighting that's coming in through something like, let's say, these windows right here in this warehouse scene that we've been working through. So one of the things that we want to be able to do is um, work within the daylighting setup that we typically have for a 3D Studio Max scene um, and get volumetric lighting to work. And I've seen a method here or there that works with the standard uh, mental ray sun and sky system. But me personally, I have not been able to get them to work consistently. So the method that I'm going to show here kind of goes old school a little bit. Uh, in terms of getting volumetric lighting to work while not making drastic modifications to what happens to the overall scene. So what we're going to do first is we need to add a light type that can actually be volumetric. So you know if I select the mental ray sun right here, our daylight object, you'll notice that in the list um, is no option whatsoever to be able to have um, a volumetric light source with this. So we know problem number one is we have to generate a new light. So we're going to use a standard light, not a photometric light, but a standard light. And uh, we want to emulate sunlight in this case. So we're going to use a free direct light. The difference between a direct and a spotlight is a spotlight is actually going to come from a source and it is going to sort of be funneling out. Um, away from that point source, whereas free direct is going to be more like sunlight where all the rays are moving parallel to each other and not radi radiating out from a location. So I'm going to go free direct and I'm just going to place it close to where my sun is. And this is the part that's a little bit slop artist of me. Um, you know, it just, it is what it is. But what I'm going to do is, uh, and I, you know, technically I could be much more precise with this, but I'll just be honest. I don't care. Um, I'm going to go ahead and match the angles visually. Of this free direct with the sun that I have. And I am sure that there's some great amazing routine that somebody out there has that would match these up. But I don't know what that is. Uh, and so I'm not going to care. That works, you know, pretty much just as well. Now, the one thing about the free direct, that cone of light is actually the cone of light that's going to be emitted. So I do need to make sure that I'm editing this. Well, it's not really a cone of light. It's more of a cylinder of light. I need to make sure that that is covering everything that I want to have illuminated in the scene. So I'm going to go to its uh, properties, intensity, color, attenuation, or make that uh, directional parameters, I should say. And we are going to raise the hotspot beam and fall off field to make sure it's surrounding everything that I want in the scene. And I don't have any fall off on this right now, so there's no decay. So I really don't need to worry about the length that this is going as much. I can go ahead and expand it out a little bit uh, if I want to. Um, but that's something I don't necessarily have to have in my overall scene to make that work. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we want to go ahead and um, I'm going to render a few things so, so we can start looking at what's working and what's not working. So before I do that, we want to go ahead and turn on volumetrics for this light. And that's going to be underneath atmosphere and effects. I'm going to add an effect, which is volumetric lighting. And say OK. And I'm going to click the Setup tab on the bottom, uh, which should open up a window. That's nice. It's, uh, if for some reason that doesn't work for you, it is underneath environment and effects. So if I scroll down here on environment and effects, we should have volumetric lights. Apparently it's been added twice. Let me delete both of those. That might have been an after effect or an after uh, thought in terms of a scene I was working with earlier. So I just want to make sure I've got both of those removed um, so that way I know which one I'm working with. I've got my light selected. I'm going to backtrack here really quickly. Atmosphere and effects, add volumetric light 
OK. And you can see that it's showing up here and here. Underneath volumetric lighting, I want to make sure that that is the light that's corresponding. Um, that's my fog color. The density of the fog. Um, the noise is something that we'll be adding on later once we get this going a little bit. So that light right now should be casting some type of volumetric. But if I render, you'll see that we're really not getting much of any effect with it at all just yet. So we know that we patients to render engine is working and the items in the scene that mental ray is dealing with so that we can get the system working well. So I'm going to go ahead and escape out of that. And I'm going to go back and select the original sun. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the sunlight off. And let's try another rendering, see if we have any changes. And you can see we're still really not getting anything, so let's go back and make another modification. Let's turn off the skylight, and that's sort of the ambient light uh, that's coming in from all areas. Let's try rendering again. So now, obviously, the scene's gotten much darker. We don't have any ambient light coming into this warehouse scene. But if you notice, we still don't have any volumetric light coming in. So we'll escape from that. And we're going to look at one more element here. If I scroll up to the top here, uh, the environment map, I can go ahead and clear the environment map. And that was just by right clicking. And now we're down to just bright lights on the window. So we've got one other thing that we need to go through, and that is the exposure control. We're just going to set that to automatic. And let's do one more rendering. All of a sudden, with automatic exposure control, we can start immediately seeing an impact on the interior. And we can start seeing the volumetric lighting coming in to our scene. So now, as I thought, let's see what we can actually begin to add back in. If we turn the sun back on and re-render, you can see that we're still getting volumetric lighting. And now we also have the, uh, the, the sun parameters, a better sense of shading and shadowing. And again, as long as I've done a decent job of matching those two things up, you know it's going to be pretty clear in terms of what's working and what's not. Let's add the skylight back in. And we're still working. So the last thing we're going to go ahead and add back in is an environment map. And I don't remember exactly which environment map was being used, so I'm just going to pick my own. and create one more rendering. So now the things that you can start to see with what's going on is the scene, you know, to have this idea of volumetric light coming in, um, the scenes, let's say it's probably a little bit too bright. Um, some things are a little bit too intense. So I, now I want to start tweaking the settings um, to get it 
this to have a little bit more of an atmospheric quality about it. So I'm going to go ahead and tap Escape. And I'm going to go ahead and downplay the value, the intensity value on a couple of things here. I'm going to drop the sun down to about a 0.25 in terms of its overall intensity. I'm going to do the same thing with the sky. I'd really like this to be sort of a darker scene. And then I might even take the global illumination right here underneath environment down a little bit as well. And so now obviously you know the scene's not a lot darker, but I think a little bit drops those values. For next rendering, what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to go ahead and move the camera a little bit closer in because I want to add a little bit of noise or some particles in the volumetric lighting itself. So I'm going to grab the camera and move it a lot closer to where that light is coming in and through the windows. And let's look at some of the additional uh, control values that I can put on the volumetric light. So if I look at um, the noise parameter, right here. I can add a little bit of noise. So I have from one, which is going to be large chunks of boxes and things floating in the air, down to about a 0.1, which should be more uh, appropriate to dust, but we'll just do a quick rendering here and find out. And we'll let this one go just a little bit further than we have been, because you're not going to get that sense of what the particles are uh, until the final pass. And again, I'm rendering this at a very low setting so that it renders quickly. So we're not going to get a great idea of what the particles are doing, but we'll get a little bit. Yes, yeah, so you can definitely see a little bit more noise in terms of the volumetric lighting now. But I want to do one other thing. I want to give this a little bit of a fade quality across it. And to add that in, what we're going to do is we're going to look back at the directional light and we're going to add in what is called a near and far attenuation. So I'm going to click on use and show and use and show. And what we're most interested in is the far attenuation. So if I begin to look at that disk that is showing up right here, it's this sort of darker line, that is going to, to let me know about when the lighting is going to stop. Uh, or, or I should say fade off. And so I'm going to set that someplace right around here where I can actually start to see a, a fall off from the light itself. The difference between the start and the end value is where that fall off happens. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing the start value just outside the windows, the end value just past the, the point in the perspective view where the light is streaming out or, or being stopped, I should say, by the floor. And so let's render that and see what kind of impact we have. And what we should begin to see is this idea that coming across at this angle there's actually a little bit of a fade in terms of how harsh the volumetric light is. So if you see up here, it's pretty extreme. As it comes closer and closer to the floor, it actually fades out a little bit. The last thing that we could do with this, if this was an animated scene, which is what most of us are all working towards on something like this, otherwise we would just Photoshop something like this in, is we can start to add in a little bit of a wind to the noise. And that's actually going to move the particles around we want to be really careful with this and add in a few test renderings to make sure that it's working correctly and that it's not something that's becoming distracting. But that's actually going to give the particle a little bit of motion and make that look even more realistic.